Tire stretching. Love them or hate them, guaranteed you've seen these before. Not sure where this trend started, it could have been from Germany, where it was a way to bypass wide wheel laws, or it could have been from Japan, known over there as Hipari. Cheap drifters would take whatever tires they can find and slap them on whatever rims they have. Is there any advantages to having stretch tires? For people looking to put wider wheels on their low cars, stretch tires is the way to go. They fit a whole lot better under the fender than squared tires. Anyway, here I have a 185-60R13 tire that I'm going to try and stretch over a 13x10 wheel. See how much of a gap I have to cover? That's almost like one and a half to two inches on each side. It's crazy. I start first by removing the valve core. By removing the valve core, I can push more volume of air through the stem. Essentially, the goal here is to cram as much air into the tire in one quick burst. Now, this is the first time I've done a tire stretch this extreme, so everything that I'm about to do is kind of experimental. Why upside down, you might ask? Well, if you ever look at a rim, maybe not all rims, but at least this one I'm working on, you'll notice the taper leading to the bead seat is a lot longer on the back side than the front side of the rim. My theory, actually not my theory, Tom's theory, having the front bead seated initially and blasting the air from the rear, as the sidewall expands, the opening for which the air can escape gradually lessens because of the longer taper. Versus the short tapered side, it's going to be fully open until the very last inch. Make sense? Hmm. I place the air pump opposite of where I'll be firing the bead blaster to somewhat balance out the airflow. Having too much air on one side could cock the tire in one direction during inflation. Lube, be very generous with it when mounting tires. Here is the air cannon, aka the cheetah, aka the bead blaster, bead seeder. You might remember it from a previous episode where I had to do a mild stretch on some stock conquest wheels. For this type of job, I'm going to go ahead and set it to the max pressure, which is 120-ish psi. Here we go, attempt number one. Nope. Attempt number two. Negative. I'm starting to notice that the tire is flopping around once I fire the cannon. I need the tire to expand evenly all around for this to work. So this time, I'm gonna use the bead press arm to maybe uh, I don't know, keep the tire from jumping too high on one side. Here we go, attempt number three. I don't know what I did differently this time around, but the tire is seated. Maybe it was the angle I held the bead blaster, maybe it was how I positioned the tire, or the amount of lube I slathered on, who knows. All I know now is it's possible for me to stretch something this ridiculous. I'll go ahead and set the tire pressure to 3537, which is higher than what the tire would normally have, which is a 29 or 30. But you gotta remember in any normal conditions, when a tire deflates or starts losing air, the bead will be kept seated because it fits perfectly on the rim. Stretched tires on the other hand will shrink and pull the bead right off. And there's no way you're gonna fix something like that on the side of the road. Well, unless you got lighter fluid, then sure, I guess. So it's very important to go with a higher PSI not exceeding maximum and to regularly monitor your tire pressure. And to finish it off, balancing. <laughs> 